Hello, hello. I am back again in the studio today talking about how we're going to trim those pieces we made yesterday. So let's get right into it. The first thing you're going to need today is your wire tool for wiring your piece from yesterday off the bat, a hunk of clay that's big enough to be broken into three equal pieces, and a larger loop tool and a smaller loop tool. I'm going to bring them in so you can really get a look at them. First thing I'm going to do is get my bat on a level surface and you might even want to turn the power on your wheel off just in case you step on the foot pedal. You don't want this bat to go flying off of your wheel head. So now that you know everything is safe and you've turned your power off, you can take your piece off with this wire tool. Wrap it around your pointer and middle fingers, come right under your piece and give a firm pull. I always like to clean my wire tool off. And then there is the piece that we made yesterday and it is dry enough to trim. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Clinging the power back onto my wheel. I'm gonna place my bat off to the side and I'm gonna take my piece and place it upside down on the wheel head, paying extra attention to the little circles on the wheel head and doing my best to center it in between the smallest circle. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is take my pointer finger and hold it pretty even to my ribs. I'm gonna to touch the edge of the piece and put a little bit of speed on the wheel. For the first few rotations, I'm just gonna see how the piece is moving. And once I sense a pattern, as the piece moves away from me, I'll stop the speed on the wheel. When I stop the speed, I'm gonna move the piece ever so slightly towards me. And then once again, I'll hold out my pointer finger and see how this piece is moving. Now I've had some practice with this, so I was able to get it pretty quickly. It might take a while, so if it does, don't get frustrated. Just do your best to work at this step to set yourself up for success. Once this piece is looking good, we're gonna break this hunk of clay into thirds. And I'm gonna get a nice little wad of clay, just like that. And I'm gonna gently push it down in three different places. So imagine there was a peace sign made through the bottom of your piece, kind of like this. You're gonna to wanna to put a hunk of clay at the tip of each line. So a quick little once over, you can see how I've used those three pieces of clay. Now I'm ready to come in and level the bottom of my piece. The first thing I'm gonna do is put a pointer finger on the tip of my larger loop tool and I'm gonna think about keeping my elbows kind of pinned down to my ribs. And really gently, with just a little bit of pressure, I'm just gonna come across the bottom for a first pass. Not pushing too hard, just getting used to how this feels. If you are a beginner to ceramics, getting to this part takes a lot of effort. So if you've made it this far, you should give yourself a little pat on the back and just know that it's really tricky to get your loop tool caught on your piece of pottery and have the whole piece go tumbling off the wheel. So if that happens, don't worry. Just take a different piece that you made yesterday and try your hand at trimming that one. I'm gonna come across the bottom of this piece one or two more times, just working to really make it nice and level. Pro tip, you can always come to the bottom of your piece and give it a little tap. If it sounds hollow, that means your floor is thin. If your tap sounds a little bit more like a thud, it means that there's a little bit of weight there and you can do for a little more trimming. This bottom is looking really nice and level. So I'm gonna take my loop tool and think about trimming the side a little bit. My middle finger goes in the center of my piece and my pointer finger goes on the tip of my loop tool. And I'm just gonna come in on the side and take some of this weight off of this piece. The 
was a pretty good first pass. It's just a habit for me to collect my trimmings as I go. I have a yellow lab, so for me personally, anything that touches the floor, like scraps of clay when you trim, I don't want to recycle that because it gets mixed with the dog hair. So I just collect my trimmings as I work on the wheel. I think it makes for a little bit easier cleanup at the end of your studio session. So that's just how I like to do it. That side is looking really nice and level. So we're going to come back and just touch the bottom one more time. And now I'm ready to come in with my smaller loop tool. I always like to use the corner of this squared piece. Come in and just make a first circle. This bottom has a little bit of extra weight in it and cutting out some material in this circle on the bottom is gonna give it a little bit more of a formal foot. If you're new to ceramics, we always call the bottom of the pottery the foot and we always call the rim of the pottery the lip. So something that you want to do on your pieces is you want to make sure that you have a smooth and even lip, but you also want to make sure that you have a balanced and even bottom. And one of the ways we do that is by making sure the bottom of our pot doesn't end up too heavy. So trimming is a way to take out some of that extra weight and make sure that this piece is comfortable to hold in the hand. So you might be like me and end up with a few messy, trimming points that's okay we're just going to take our time doing a few more passes and even this out it's actually looking pretty good right there if i'm being honest i can see a spot where i could have wedged my clay a little bit better so that's a little note to self Once your piece is looking really smooth and neat and even just like this, you know it's the perfect time to come in with your yellow potter sponge and smooth out any little imperfections that might be there. If you're new to ceramics, you're just learning that something that can be easily smoothed with your sponge would be really difficult to sandpaper off when your piece comes out of the bisque firing. So make sure to take your time and come back with a clean sponge. I sometimes start right in the middle just like this and use my fingertips to give the piece just like a firm push and I glide the sponge all over making sure this piece looks neat and even. I carefully remove my little hunks of clay and there you have it. We have a nice trimmed cylinder. This piece is ready for a handle or if you want it to be just like this you are done working in the studio for today. My name is Nicole Thomas and this is a pottery tip by Classic Clayworks. If you stop by today, just drop me a little heart emoji in the comments below to let me know that you watched the video and thought it was helpful. Thanks for being here.